question number five. Which resolution produces the best quality fax? Ang fax or facsimile, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay reproduction of an image exactly at the receiving end. Tawag natin doon facsimile. Okay? Para mas maganda or mas ma-replicate natin ng saktong-sakto yung image at the receiving end, you must have a good resolution. Pero alin dito ang magpuproduce ng best quality facts based on resolution? Siyempre, yung may pinakamataas. At ang pinakamataas dito ay letter D. Okay? Ang LPI, ibig sabihin ng LPI is lines per inch. Yan yung, yan yung uh, pag-scan niya doon sa image. Ganyan karami. 400 lines per inch will give you a better resolution or a better quality fax. So, for number 5, the answer is letter D. Okay? Next number, number 6. In frequency hopping spread spectrum sequence, each value in the pseudorandom sequence is known as blank. And the inverse of its period is known as blank. Okay? Alam naman natin yung frequency hopping. No? Sa frequency hopping, kung meron tayong, if this is our frequency, yung ating signal hops from one frequency to another frequency. Okay? Nag-hop siya to different frequencies. Anong tawag natin doon sa each value in the pseudo-random sequence, anong tawag natin doon? In frequency hopping spread spectrum, we call it blank. <laughs> okay? Kasi pagka sinabi ko, alam nyo na kagad yung sagot. And yung inverse ng period yun nun ay anong tawag? The inverse of uh, the pseudo-random sequence. What do you call that? We call that hop. <laughs> okay? So the answer for this is what? The answer for this is we call it the channel number and the inverse of that is the hop rate. The answer is letter C. Okay? Okay. Next number. Number 7. The process of decaying from one energy level to another en energy level is called blank. Ano daw tawag natin doon sa proseso na yun na nagdidecay from one energy level to another energy level. Actually, ang tinutukoy niya dyan is the charged particle, particularly an electron. Okay? So, for example, meron tayong nucleus. Ito yung nucleus natin. And of course, we all know that neutrons and the protons reside on the nucleus. And meron tayong mga orbits, no? mga orbitals. Okay? Ngayon, yung, yung uh, electron on one level, for example, loses energy and falls to another another uh, level. No? Yung orbit kasi niyan, tinatawag din na level yan or energy level. Now, for yung electron, if, if, if that falls from one energy level to the lower energy level, anong tawag natin doon? We call it decay. But the process is what we call the spontaneous decay, letter B. Okay? So, that's for number 7, spontaneous decay. Okay? Next, number 8. Which of the following is an advantage of ring topology? Alin daw dito ang advantage ng ring topology? Actually, kung titignan mo siya, parang lahat siya advantage, you eh, know? Moving, adding, and changing the devices will not affect the network. Parang advantage siya, tama? Bandwidth is shared on all links between devices. Easier to configure than a start topology and reconfiguration. Due to point-to-point -point line configuration of devices with a device on either side, it is quite easy to install and reconfigure since adding or removing a device requires moving just two connections. Parang lahat siya advantage siya, tama? But actually, hindi naman talagang tinatanong dyan advantage. It's, it's true or false. Okay? Characteristic ng ring topology, ang tinutukoy dyan, not really an advantage. 
But because the answer is true, becomes an advantage for ring topology. Pero anong sagot niyan? Yan. Usually, sabi natin kung ano yung pinakamahaba, yun yung sagot eh. Tama? Tama po ba? Okay. Well, tama talaga. Yun yung sagot. Okay. Letter D. Due to point-to-point -point line configuration of devices with a device on either side. Yan. Kasi pagka ring topology nga naman, paikot eh. Tama? Halimbawa, meron akong device dito, device doon, device dito, device dyan. Okay? Tapos nakapaikot yan. Correct? Sabi niya, due to point to point. Yan. Uh, point to point line configuration of devices with device on either side. It is quite easy to install and reconfigure since adding or removing a device requires moving just two connections. So, pag mag insert ka nga naman, Dalawa lang yung tatanggalin mo, eh. yung connection mo rito, tsaka connection mo ron. So, that is an advantage. That is also true. Ito kasi false for the ring topology. Okay? So, moving and adding and changing the devices will not affect the network? Of course, it will affect the network. Bandwidth is shared on all links between devices? No, that is for bus topology. Easier to configure than star topology and reconfiguration? No, that's not true. So, letter D is true and at the same time, an advantage. Okay? So, letter uh, D is for number 8. Okay? Number 9. The type of cell that is served by a BTS placed on its edge <coughs> and uses a set... Excuse me, <coughs> <laughs> and uses a sector antenna, one BTS site can serve one, two, or three sectors. Anong tawag daw natin doon? Kapag yung, yung BTS daw, ano nga ulit yung BTS? That is the cell site. Okay? That's the cell site. Or the base transceiver station. Usually kasi ang base transceiver station natin, or the BTS is placed where? It is placed at the center. Tama? Nasa gitna yan eh. You have the hexagon and then nasa gitna siya nung uh, hexagon natin. Pero ito, hindi. Nasaan daw siya? Nandun daw siya sa edge. <laughs> Wala siya sa top. No? Nandun siya sa edge. Wala siya sa center. I mean, nandun siya sa edge. Alright. Rock and roll to the world. Okay? Andito siya sa ayan. Nasa edge siya. Yan. Okay? Ano daw ang tawag natin dyan? Tawag, ang tawag natin dyan is letter, letter C, sector cell. Okay? That's for number 9. Di pa lumalabas sa board yan, ha? Pag lumabas sa board yan, alam nyo na kung ano ang sagot. Okay? Number 9 is letter C, sector cell. Next question. Next question, number 10. For number 10, refer to the following parameters and compute what is required. Okay. Number of subscriber is 10,000. Traffic per subscriber is 0 0.025 Erlang. Okay. Uh, remind me later. <laughs> okay. Traffic per subscriber is 0 0.025 Erlang and traffic per cell is 8.2 Erlang. Calculate the number of cells needed to service this capacity. So, magkocompute magka tayo ulit. No? Ang tinatanong sa atin, ilang cells daw ang kailangan natin para sa capacity na to. Pero ang tanong, ilan ba yung, ilan ba yung number of subscriber mo per cell? Pag nalaman kasi natin yun, yung, yung number of subscribers, yung total number of subscribers, i-divide natin yung uh, number of subscribers per cell. Okay? So, ganito. Para hindi na tayo malito. No? Computein muna natin. Ilan ba yung number of subscriber per cell? Yan. That is equal to the traffic per cell. Okay, traffic per cell all over 
traffic per traffic per subscriber. Okay? Ilan daw yung traffic per cell natin? That is 8.2 er lang. And, and yung traffic per subscriber 0.025 er lang. Ilan ngayon yung number of subscribers per cell? That would be around 328. Tama po ba? Okay, pakicalculate po ah. That is around 328. Tama? Okay. So, 328 pala ang subscriber ko, ang number of subscriber ko sa isang cell. Eh, ang total na subscriber, 10,000. Ilang cell lang kailangan para ma-cover natin yung lahat ng 10,000 subscriber na yun? Idi divide natin ngayon yung uh, traffic or number of subscriber per cell or yung total number of subscriber sa number of subscriber per cell. So that is 10,000. Purain ko lang to para hindi tayo malito ha. Yan, 10,000 subscribers. Okay. Di divide natin to 328 subscriber per cell. So ilang cells ang makukuha natin lahat? Makukuha natin will be 30 cells, around 30 cells. So the answer for this question obviously is letter letter C, 30 cells. Nakuha po ba 'yon? Okay. So, yan ay password question. Uh -huh. Yan ay tinanong na sa board exam. Baka sakali na itanong ulit sa board exam yan.